All right. So, and I'll, I'll go and explain this as well. When, it's, when I say find the x and y intercepts, right now we're dealing with a function. So when dealing with a function, we have an input and an output of an x and an f of x. But when talking about x and y intercepts, a lot of times, yeah, it is helpful if we just rewrite our function using an equation for x, x squared minus 4x plus 4. All right. So a lot of times we can just rewrite this, and that will just help us understand, oh, all right, here's going to be dealing with our y-intercept. So what I'd like to do is remember, ladies and gentlemen, when I'm asking you to find the x and y-intercepts, there's two important things you guys need to look at. First of all, you don't need to draw the graph, but I think it's just helpful when understanding x and y-intercepts. When we look at the x-intercepts, right, that's where the graph crosses the x-axis, we know that y equals 0. Right? There's no value for y here. Or I'm sorry, the value of y is 0. When we look at the y-intercept, that means where the graph crosses uh, the y-axis, we know that x equals 0. Does everybody see that? Because if you're going to you know, kind of count your tick marks everywhere you need to go, we notice that when we just go straight down, we didn't go left and right. Therefore, x is, has a value of 0, because every point has an x and a y-coordinate. When you go left and right and you don't go up or down, that means your y coordinate has 0. So when I ask you to find the x and y intercepts, what you're going to do is create two cases. So the first one, like I said, you don't really need this is just kind of a sketch. For the first one, I told you you didn't have to draw it. I can help you draw it if you need to. So when drawing the x and y intercepts, this is what you need to know, Cody. The y intercept is when x equals 0, and the x intercept is when y equals 0. Now, you're definitely going to want to make sure you have that written out. Got it? OK. So all we're simply doing, the only mathematics we really now have to do is just plug in 0 for either variable. So for over here, when we plug 0 in for x, or for x we have y equals 0 squared minus 4 times 0 plus 4. And over here, when we put 0 in for y, we have 0 equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. Okay. So now, when looking at this, the y-intercept's pretty basic, because 0 squared is 0. Negative 4 times 0 is 0. So therefore, I have my y-intercept is when y equals 4, which sometimes we like to write as a coordinate point of 0, comma 4. All right? And you guys are going to have to know how to do that and plot it. Huh? Yeah. Now, this is where it's going to get a little bit more difficult, though, with the x-intercepts, because this goes back to a little bit, actually, our homework um, from the previous class. How do we solve for x when we have more than just 1? We can't just get x by itself, but we have to look into factoring. So that is where we're going to go back into this case again, right? Where either your a times c over b. So then for you look at what two terms multiply to give you 4, but add to give you negative 4. And you're going to have negative 2 and negative 2. Therefore, you could say 0 equals x minus 2 times x minus 2. By applying the zero product property, we can say x minus 2 equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0. Therefore, x equals 2. Well, so it says a times b yep. rather than 4. What if the a was a 2? We're going to do one of those next. Okay. But that's just a basic thing when you guys have one of those examples. Nope. 